100 years ago, a group of Canadian women marched into the office of the Manitoba Premier. They had a petition with thousands of signatures saying it was time women had the right to vote. What happened next changed the lives of generations of women across this country. Here's Lorraine McNabb. It's in the headlines, there in black and white. Give women the right to vote and homes will be ruined. It's unbelievable and my kids find it hard to believe that and my grandchildren think that's I'm making it up. When it comes to this topic, Helen Anderson's family has learned she doesn't joke. Her husband was a great nephew of Nellie McClung. She's important to me because, because of the rights that I have now. The Manitoban who helped lead a group of women to the Premier's office 100 years ago this week to hear this. Take it from me, Mrs. McClung. Nice women don't want the vote. They were incensed by that, as they should have been, because they thought this was a serious meeting. And in fact, it was tea and cookies with the Premier, thank you very much. <laughs> Little did he know he had just given them some pretty funny material for a play they performed to a sold-out crowd. Men would get agitated. They would get too involved in politics. They would destroy the home. Why, they would become obsessed with politics. Politics are like drinks. Once you start... A mock parliament where they pretended it was men, not women, unable to vote. And the ridiculousness probably came home to a lot of people who maybe hadn't thought about it. Susan Mooney has thought a lot about it, read every article on it. Mooney was McClung's maiden name. Nellie is her great-great-aunt. So it might have been a turning point in people's thoughts about why couldn't women have the vote. It was. Two years later, Manitoba became the first province to give women that right. One McClung's descendants take pretty seriously. Would you ever consider not voting? Like, is that... Oh, never. I stopped to vote uh, when on my way to the hospital to have my fifth child. Well aware of all they've had to fight for, like the government job Helen was forced to give up in the 1950s. Because women, married women didn't have to work, and, and they were taking a job away from a man. The work some women still don't have. There is still some gender prejudice, um, for sure, uh, when it comes to salaries, when it comes to uh, who's the boss, um, and, and where the power sits. There in black and white, perhaps the next hurdle to jump. Lorraine McNabb, Global News, Winnipeg.